it's Sunday and you're here. You're not watching Daredevil. You're watching Mailbag. That's very nice of you. Um, thank you so much for joining us once again. It is our casual show where we take from you questions that you guys have submitted collider video at gmail.com you've submitted a whole bunch of them we've answered some and i have a great team here to help me read said emails first the modest assassin himself dennis zang how are you sir good good not only are we doing like daredevil season two coverage we had what you guys did the man of steel commentary last week yep. we did doing trailer reactions we got tv talk tomorrow just a lot of stuff going on here yes and helping us read the emails today she was here yesterday she's back again wendy lee hello wendy Hey guys, everybody. So I want a nickname just like Dennis. You got to you gotta, you, <laughs> you gotta well, think about that one, I, though. Well, that came from his appearance in the Schmodown team tournament last ah. last year. It was the way that... Because he, he goes in there going, nah, I'm not going to remember stuff. And it was just like, boom, boom, boom. Hitting Nailed shots. It. Yeah, and then that's why I have the Schmodown title belt here right now. That is currently Mark Riley's mm -hmm. the reigning champion. Um, but I, we talked about it yesterday in the mailbag, and I figured, you know what? I'm just going to leave it here on the desk. Um, now, Dennis, you know, before we go into the emails, you bring something up to where we have the Man of Steel commentary yeah. that we did, the trailer action Daredevil. Um, this was something that when we were like, okay, we're gonna do this, and we're gonna take Collider, kind of, we're gonna move forward, and visions of what we were gonna do, and it's coming to fruition, it really is, it's it's coming now, all these things are happening, it's a lot of work. Yes. But it's been pretty exciting. <laughs> yes, a lot of work, not a lot of sleep, but right. it's been exciting nonetheless. Yeah, and we have TV Talk, which yeah. is launching on Monday, that's gonna be really cool tomorrow, it launches tomorrow, I'm so excited to, to finally get TV talk off the ground and uh, we have some other really cool shows in development the showdown so thank you guys a lot of brand new subscribers that have been tuning in keep doing it check it out comment below and we'll get to your questions I try to Wendy does a lot of stuff to, to Dennis has been looking at the comments I'm looking at the comments thank you so much let's read an email what do we got all right James Van Vice I'm sorry James Van Heist writes the trailer I've seen for now you see me too seems to indicate that the actress who was one of the four horsemen in the first film has been replaced but the trailer is trying to obscure that fact for now and I'll finish your question for you you guys what do you think <laughs> now I think I believe he's talking about Ella Fisher mm -hmm. who is not in the movie I don't know the the story whether it was maybe she wanted some more kashish or maybe I she, heard she was pregnant yeah yes. she's pregnant okay well maybe that's that well there you go so good reason to miss a movie um, so she was not part of the film and I don't know if they are trying to obscure the fact um, are they have they added someone brand new yes to the Lizzie Kaplan oh, right, right. is so, kind of like the yeah. new fil female yeah, yeah, position yeah. In, in the in the four horsemen I so guess. no I don't think they're obscuring it because they had they not introduced Lizzie Kaplan then I've been like okay well they don't, there's no mention of a replacement there's no mention of anything else so they're letting you know that um, and especially now that I know the fact that she was pregnant there was no bad blood or anything too so they'll probably Probably have mention of why she left and if the movie is successful and because of that reason she'll probably be back in number three you would assume if there is indeed a third one if this movie isn't you know a piece of garbage can I just mention that I actually rewatched the trailer and there's a part where it seems like Mark Ruffalo's character kind of brings her to the other three horsemen and she's like I'm the girl horseman woo and probably in the like, beginning of the movie yeah so yeah. It, that's maybe a way of introducing her to the rest of the guys. yeah I don't think they're trying to hide it in the trailer because the trailer isn't there's no time to explain that. They're not going to be like, hey, by the way, this girl's gone because da, 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 da. they'll save it for the movie. Now, if we watch the movie and they don't mention her at all and they don't explain why she's missing, then I'm then I'm like, oh, they're trying to hide. Right, right. But 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 like we said, she she was pregnant. It had nothing to do with any type of argument or falling out with any of the cast members or the director. She just was pregnant. So maybe she'll if. Yeah, like you're right. In the third one, if they have one, maybe she'll be back and Lizzie Kaplan will be there right. too. And they have two females. And they're both really likable actresses too because I really am a big fan of Ella Fisher and I'm a big fan of uh, Lizzie Kaplan. They're both really great. So if they could, if, if assume, hoping that yeah. this one is really good and it does really well, that there is indeed a third one, these two together, that's exciting. And it would be kind of a cool, fun little rivalry. I, if I'm kind of sad on. that uh, Melanie Laurent is not in this new one she was oh, right a, she was really good yeah she she's glorious bastards yep. yeah she's she's a great actress too um okay what is next emil johansson writes what happens if the marvel spider-man fails does marvel lose him again could it be possible could it possibly be a failure in the sense of my amazing wow i'm just messing this up it's all right. could it be possible a failure in the sense amazing spider-man 2 was or worse um, no, I don't think Marvel could lose it because it's still Sony's <laughs> movie. You're talking about the standalone because, let's face facts, like Civil War financially is oh. not going to fail. No. So Marvel's good on that end. 
they almost will have a stronger case if Sony kind of we don't know what the deal is exactly between Sony and Marvel, but if Sony's movie just stinks, right? And Sony has been saying that they it it's or it's the press release has said that Sony's in full control still of that mm-hmm. movie. Yeah, I don't buy that. <laughs> but let's say that it is. It's more of a case for Marvel to go. He worked a little better in our movie. <laughs> So I, I think that it, it's actually the opposite of that. I think that if, for, but I, but I also will say that I don't think the Sony movie is going to fail. Mm. I think because of the fact that Marvel is so invested now in this movie, and because they have Sony has like this big brother now to kind of help them out, um, and because Marvel has to be protective over this movie because it does, it is now a part of their universe, which is unheard of before. We've not, we have not had this yet in this new, this brand new kind of shared universe that we've been accustomed to over the last eight, nine years, whatever it is. We have never had a shared universe between two studios. Never yeah. happened. Um, so this is very interesting to see how that happens, but make no mistakes about it. Marvel and Kevin Feige are going to be very protective, and you're, I think you're going to get a pretty damn good Spider-Man movie once that Sony movie comes out. Dennis, what do you think? Well, also, I want to state The Amazing Spider-Man 2, as much as there was kind of like a mixed reaction to it. It was not a failure at the box no, office. It made a ton of Critical money. Critical and fan failure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it also, it didn't make as much money as they wanted it to. They were expecting more. So it was a, more of a disappointment right. to the studio. They were saying a billion dollars. A yeah, right. yeah. Um, but if I, ha- I don't, I doubt that it would be a failure. You know, if Marvel is working on this with Sony and and if you and me are correct in assuming that Marvel has more control than they're letting on, I have a feeling that it's going to turn out good and they're they're going to make a lot of money from it. But if let's say hypothetically let's say it sucks, bombs at the box office, maybe Sony will go, "Hey, maybe we can do this on our own without you, Marvel." I don't know what the legalities are. I don't right. know what their contract right. actually says. But they definitely still have the, I guess, the licensing rights to it. So I think at any point, maybe not any point, but at some point they could retract him if things aren't financially going the way they want him to. Yeah, but that it doesn't. If you think about that, I agree with you, but I don't think that works in their favor though. Because yeah. if like, yeah. let's say, like you said, the movie bombs, yeah. right? And they say, well, we're gonna do it without you. The fans are saying, well, wait a minute. In the press release, it says that you guys are still yeah. in control, so that's your fault. You <laughs> did it again. Yeah. You failed again. And then the fans are going to go, no, give it back to Marvel. It's going to be a big, huge thing. So this was a great move by Marvel. They were just like, oh, we got nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then when it does well, oh, look what we did. What of we course, did. It's a, it was a great move for them. Yeah. It was a really smart move, and Sony still gets a hold. So it was a, it was a good deal by Sony, but a great deal by Marvel. Mm-hmm. All right, what's next? All right. Jonathan Burnett the second writes, "Hey Collider crew, can't wait to see the new TV news show. Looks like you guys are going to cover all the facets of entertainment. Keep up the great work and expanding the brand. Here's my question, and I think Christian will get a kick out of this. How would you feel about a twins remake with Kevin Hart and Dwayne Johnson? Have Arnold played the part of the scientist who completes who completes the experiment, and as a twist, have Dwayne played the Danny DeVito role and Kevin in the Arnold role? I think that Kevin and Dwayne have similar chemistry to that of Arnold." Arnold and Danny. Thanks, guys. I can't wait to hear a response. Now, strangely enough, I, I actually, I do, I, if the Central Intelligence trailer never came out, then I would say, this sounds kind of fun. This sounds like, it could be, but it, it, the role reversal is kind of what they're doing in Central Intelligence. It, but, you know, come on, Arnold, as, as a scientist, let me just tell you the truth here. <laughs> come on, you, you, you're you built and strong, but he's the one that has a very huge penis. Um, I think that, <laughs> I think that's what's probably going to happen in that movie. No, but I think that the, the two of them, now that's not to say that they can't do something similar to maybe what Richard Pryor and, uh, Gene, and Gene Wilder did as where if this movie Central Intelligence does really well mm-hmm. and people like this chemistry that a twin I think they're also doing a twin is that still happening that twin sequel that was supposed oh, to be Eddie Murphy I and, uh, and, yeah. who, and, and I and I think I can't remember what it was he was like the third brother or something yeah, yeah. too that I hope never happens <laughs> ever but uh, I don't know what where they are in development for that but I, I I would like to see more of that combination with Hart and Dwayne Johnson if the indication of the trailer actually reflects on what the actual movie is because the trailers have been, I've been impressed with the trailers and originally when I heard about it, I, I was no, no mm. thanks. Dennis, do you like the idea of this? I uh, like it a movie? lot. Yeah, I like it a lot. I think it's a good idea. They do have chemistry and I, yes, the role reversal thing is being done in central intelligence, but I think if they do it again in a twins remake or reboot, 
I'll be fine with it as long as it's funny. If they get the right script, they get a good director in there, and we know that that The Rock has comedic chops. We know Kevin Hart does, and both of them together, if Central Intelligence is good, let's say it comes out and we watch and go, look, they got great chemistry just like in the trailer, then I, I'm all for it. Yakety yak, don't talk back. <laughs> uh, what do you think? I would be excited to see it. I like The Rock and I like him in comedies and Kevin Hart always makes me laugh. Let's just do it. I think that I would prefer, if you're going to do this though, I think I'd prefer without the role reversal. Mm -hmm. I think that I would like to see Dwayne Johnson kind of, because we're just going to see him do this thing on Central Intelligence, but to have him come back. Because remember how Julius in Twins is very naive. Mm -hmm. He's very, like, he's so pure. I would like to see the role reversal of of Dwayne Johnson doing that because he's and he's going to be coming off Baywatch, which I think mm -hmm. he's probably going to be pretty raunchy. <laughs> so I'd like to see him kind of go back to this kind of pure thing as to where you have Kevin Hart really be this because Danny DeVito is despicable in Twins for the first part of that movie. It's one. It's a great comedy, by the way. Um, so yeah, I think it could work. I wouldn't be opposed to it. I just I think I'd be opposed to the role reversal. Mm -hmm. Wendy, what's next? Sage Rodrigo writes, hey guys, this, ago, this goes against popular opinion, but I absolutely hate Vincent D'Onofrio's take on the kingpin Wilson Fisk. I feel as if he's more of this emotionally unstable crybaby instead of the cunning and sinister sociopath we have come to love in the comics. What are some critically acclaimed performances in television and film you have just hated? Thanks for doing what you do. Oh, man. De uh, Dennis, let me start with you. What, what, what's your list? Well, first, I don't have a list, but I yeah. personally loved Vincent D'Onofrio's take on uh, Wilson Fisk and uh, Kingpin. I, I, I thought he brought some depth and dimension to why that character was the way he was, especially in that universe. Right. So I have to disagree with you there. Uh, personally, I don't know if it, it's not definitely not critically came to performance, but um, I know a lot of people weren't as bothered by... Uh, What's what's her name? Uh, Sybil Killily, who played Shay in Game of Thrones. Right. I absolutely hated her performance in it. I couldn't stand. The character was so whiny, so false bravado, just all into herself. And I don't feel like that character was supposed to be played that way. And right. I just, a lot of fans, they they they're like, uh, it was okay or whatever. I don't know how you felt about it, but for me, I was like, this is, and this is in a cast that is fantastic. All right. the roles they've casted, every actor in there, that was the one that glared out for me. Yeah, um, you know, it's funny, because I really thought that um, uh, she was, I thought she was okay. You know, it, yeah, most, most people, people most did. Most people do, I thought she was all right. But uh, trying to, you know, there was, there was one, I kept just coming through, I went back to almost the question that we had yesterday, which was more, I started thinking of really bad performances in great movies mm -hmm. more than I was thinking of the, the, the actors that I thought were great that I thought were crappy, that I thought was great. I kept coming up to that Keanu Reeves um, performance in, in Bram Stoker's Dracula. Yeah. Because that movie itself, I don't know why I kept going into that. I kept trying to think of, well, what are some performances that were really kind of stood up, people really loved, that I hated, and I couldn't really come up with that many. It's tough. Most of the ones that are that I can think of are where I might think they're overrated, or I yeah. thought, okay, like I like Sandra Bullock. I think she's great. I actually think she did a better job in, in a movie like Gravity than she did in Blindside. Blindside you know, is a good example. Where yeah, she, like, won she, she won the Oscar and for it, right? She, you know, she's great, but I think that performance was was good, but it was right. it wasn't anything. As I thought, she was much better in Gravity. I mean, maybe. I mean, it's not. It's. I don't think there's two there's two performances I don't think should have been nominated or, or you know is and unfortunately it's the same actress and I and I like her is Jennifer Lawrence I don't think she should have won for American Hustle mm -hmm. she could be nominated for that one for sure but I don't think she should have won and she certainly shouldn't have been nominated for Joy both good performances though both yeah. good performances I just think as far as Oscar recognition I don't know if she should have been nominated for those two. Uh, Wendy, do you have any particular? Or do you want to move on? Oh, you, you took mine. I was thinking Joy with Jennifer oh, okay. Lawrence. Cause yeah. I, 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 the movie was great. I just heard it was. Mm. Yeah. All right. What's next? <laughs> All right. Gary writes, "Hey, Collider crew, can't wait for TV talk to start. But quick question about its content, if I may: Will the show be predominantly sci-fi fantasy shows, or will it be diverse enough to talk about cop shows and spy series? For example, as well as Shield, Flash, and Arrow, will it talk about Castle, Legends of Tomorrow, and NCIS?" Also, will Game of Thrones and the new Shannara Chronicles be among the list? Can you give us a rough idea how wide the net will be cast as to what shows we'll discuss? Thank you for your time and all of your hard work. Well, it's a phenomenal question, Gary, and I appreciate you asking it. And the first thing that we should also let you guys know is that you should make sure that you hashtag Collider TV Talk 
so you can get certain questions like this on the air so our cast can go through them, sort them, and there will be a section devoted to, to you guys to get those questions out there. Now, I'm going to let Dennis kind of speak a little bit more on this. Um, Dennis, I know we, we've kind of been talking about the format, and it's evolving. Yes. It's totally evolving. Yes. And, and it will evolve. It will evolve. And we're and for our goal is to get this thing to two, three times a week yeah. eventually. It's up to you guys, though. It really is up to you. Watch the show. Chime in. Tell your friends about it. Get it to where we're, you know, you guys are talking about it the same way you do movie talk. And then we'll have so much more for them to talk about. But for now, what do you think out of these shows that he's asking about? And, and Yeah, I think... Sci-fi and fantasy are big ones that we're going to cover. Obviously, the superhero shows as well. I think also crime drama and stuff like that. Uh, he's talking about... Um, Shannara Chronicles. Shannara Chronicles. I think that will be talked about. Legends of Tomorrow, yes. The ones that I don't think so are like NCIS and Castle. And it's not, nothing against the people that watch the show or anything like that. The problem is those shows, are a lot of them are very episodic. They're right. just like they've got one story per episode. And we're looking for an ongoing conversation. We're yeah. looking for like, hey... The fans that, that, that watch the show, it's a serialized thing. It's a big, long story. We're obviously going to talk about Game of Thrones, right. Daredevil, all that stuff. So, yeah, and comedies, too, is a little hard to review those. I mean, we'll talk about them, especially in the new segments, but, like, reviewing them is a lot harder. You're like, oh, yeah, that joke. It was funny, right? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And however, I mean, like, look, something big happens on Castle where everyone's talking about this big, huge moment that yeah. happened. Now, it's not necessarily going to be a spoiler, but the crew in the news will definitely be talking about it because it's TV news. The same way with the movie movie talk, a TV talk. There's going to be a lot. And they're going to be listening to your voice, the stuff that you're going to want to talk about. It's not a I know there's a lot of talk as well. Well, because we've kind of cut back on some of the after shows is this taking the place is going to be just like one hour full of after shows. No, there's an element to it, yeah. for sure. But that's, again, why we're hoping to eventually expand it a little more. But as we mentioned, it's entirely up to you guys. So go there on Monday. Show the support to the new crew. Let your voices be heard to that new uh, crew and the new show of what you want to see, what you like, what they debut, all that stuff. And it is on Mondays. If you're already subscribed here, great. You will see it. Make sure you check it out. And once again, hashtag Collider TV Talk. Get your questions out there on the Twitter sphere. And Can there's I, like, there's a more, we're going to cover like House of Cards and Orange is the New stream, Black. There's a streaming section. Uh, yeah. The, uh, People versus OJ. So it's not mm -hmm. just superhero right, sci-fi right, right. fantasy. 11, 22, 63. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we just want to, we want to talk about what, what what's kind of buzzing in the TV world. TV, there's so much out there. Dennis and I, every day when we're going through like the, the notes in it for a movie talk, <laughs> we're saying like to you guys, we're like, okay, there is, uh, there's, this TV story, this TV story here. There's so much TV news. So there's so much to cover. Wendy, you had a question? Yeah, I wanted to know. So we talked about you're going to cover some of, you know, uh, a little bit of everything. But would that include some animated series? Because we know the Justice League action is coming back. Mark Hamill's doing the voice for the Joker. Is that something to think about? I too? think so. I think it could possibly pop up, especially if it's something that, you know, I, I just finished watching, uh, what was that? Uh, uh, Teen what? Titan? Teen, is it Teen Titans? Teen no, Titan young, young Justice. Oh, young Justice. I, I just finished yes. Young Justice, and I thought that was cool. And watching that series, that would maybe that would fall into the superhero roundup that we're going to be doing right. on the show. I also think that's that's the evolution of the show yeah. because look, what I think that we both are agreement of too. I want to see this show just blow up yeah. and do uh, great to where we're doing the same type of numbers that that that's happening on Movie Talk, yeah. but eventually we can get it daily. But that and that in order to do it daily. What you have to do there is you you have to when it is daily you have so much to cover so animation yes. would definitely fall into that but right now being once a week it's very similar like Jedi Council or like Heroes yeah. you take the biggest news stories you take the stuff that people are talking about and, and and you put it in there for one week but because TV is so big and there's so much stuff it's a matter of what you guys really want to hear about yeah all right what's next Antonio Jakes writes. Hey, Collider Movie Talk crew. I'm a big X-Men fan. I enjoy Days of Future Past, but wish there were more scenes in the future. I was a bit disappointed with Apocalypse because I wanted to see the original cast return and face him. I prefer the original cast over the first class cast. It seems like we won't get a Team X-Men film set in the present day due to the next film takes place in the 80s. With the success of Deadpool over 700 million worldwide and closing in on Days of Future Past, and the fact that it is set in present day, could we see an X-Men film set in present day? Days with the original cast and if this was possible would you like to see Tim Miller direct a film with the original cast that's a really good question I mean uh, whether or not we're gonna see Tim Miller direct a 
X-Men film with the cast that we kind of became accustomed to. Uh, no, I don't think that'll happen. I think that he's going to be focused on the Deadpool sequels, or if he wants to continue in the universe, maybe maybe part X Force. I, I don't I don't know, but I mean, he might be playing in that in that pool. And I don't think that they're. I think that that was kind of the point of them doing X Men First Class and Days of Future Past was to really. I thought it was done really well. It was to get the audience used to this brand new cast. And I happen. I, I kind of disagree with you here. I really enjoy the new cast, very much so. And I like that they're actually e even introducing even more people here to you in the new Cyclops and a new Jean Grey and, and, and we get to see Quicksilver more. I think this is a very smart move for them to, you're, th this is the third film that McAvoy and, um, and Fassbender are doing together. Like this is, they're, they're becoming the characters the same way that Patrick Stewart was becoming the uh, Professor X. It's, a sa it's the same thing. So I like the way the direction they're going, and I think that because they're doing it in the time periods, and then they can do the '90s, and then they can do the 2000s. It would be very interesting by the time they get to the 2000s. That maybe, who knows what age these actors will be. Dennis, what do you think? I think we're done with the original cast. I don't think completely. We're, you never yeah, see him. Yeah, I don't think him we're gonna see him again. Even I think, the cameos and stuff. I don't think other than Wolverine, Hugh Jackman. Right, right. I, I think that that Days of Future Past was the passing of the torch. They passed the torch, and now it's a brand new cast, and they're just going to go with that because. You know, the other characters, we, we haven't seen them in, in such a long time. I mean, even in Days of Future Past, think about like how much you saw of Cyclops or Jean Grey. It wasn't really that much, right? right? It was just a little bit, really. It was concentrated mostly on, obviously, Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, but then the new cast. And so I think from now on, that's the way it's going to be. As far as Deadpool is concerned, do we know Deadpool was set in... I, 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 I haven't seen it, you know, it's been a few weeks now. Was there any indication that that was set in present day? And I mean present day in the sense of like, were they using like new cell phones? Were they using the internet? Were they, they kind of teased that it was just because the, the, you know, it was never confirmed because they don't have the rights to, but the, the shield carrier kind of, mm -hmm. the crash shield carrier kind of, mm. I know we don't, there's no confirmation yeah. whether or not it is or isn't, but I'm, I'm pretty sure from the cars and the setup itself, mm -hmm. it was set up to be present day. Present, not just like maybe 10 years ago or I 20 years ago. I don't know. So. I, I don't know. know. I, I don't, I don't remember. The, yeah, I don't know. Like I, seeing, I have to go back and see it. I've only seen the movie once, actually. I want to go back and, and check that out. But because um, if that's the case, then maybe they he can coincide with this new cast sure. as they you know maybe move on to the '90s or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Now I remember, and I don't uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember when we were talking. It could have been on movie talk as long as it was last year, but wasn't there kind of a reveal that Patrick Stewart? Um, was going to be in uh, Magneto and Professor X were both going to be in this movie in the cameo maybe because they revealed it by accident through marketing or something. I don't know. I thought I that remember. there was kind of. I, th I think there was some rumors or something. About yeah, that. I thought it was kind of rumors, and then I thought it was kind of confirmed, but goofed by some mm -hmm. kind of marketing, like some uh, I don't know merchandising thing that they they messed up and. I don't remember. I thought there was something like that. If you guys know out there, comment below and and let us know uh, exactly what. So, um, okay. Um, what's next? Andy Gates writes, With the somewhat surprising news of the new Indiana Jones coming in 2019 and the way Harrison Ford has a history of wanting his iconic characters to meet their doom, is it crazy to think that Dr. Jones will be killed in the next movie? I just rewatched The Temple of Doom today, and with it technically being the first story in the timeline, in it Willie says to Indy that his search for the fortune and glory is going to get him killed, in which he replies, maybe, but not today. I immediately thought this would be foreshadowing the franchise. Is there any way Disney, Ford, and Spielberg let Indiana Jones die? Thanks for taking my question and for entertaining me every day in the past for the past few years. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon if it happens, and I don't think that they should do it. Um, I think that especially, in, look, here, I'm about to do a spoiler here on another movie that came out. It's a big movie that you should have seen, so I'm going to do this. <laughs> You've been warned. Um, Force Awakens, it happened. Uh, they they he they've talked about killing off Solo for a very long time, and it happened. And I think that it would be too jarring if you killed off two Harrison Ford characters so close within each other. Because this movie comes out in 2019, mm -hmm. still it'd still be about four years off from when it happened. But it's still going to be fresh in your brain that Han Solo. It's still four years later. You'll still know that the last time is that he was an iconic character. He died, and I still am hoping 
really hoping that the way that they do this movie is that you have the same way that they did the last crusade with river phoenix was that the beginning you or, or you have for the majority of the movie is uh, harrison ford as old indy but you flash back to whether it's a bradley cooper or, or chris pratt or whoever it might be passing the torch but he is young indiana jones so we could have another adventure that takes place in the 30s or 40s i think that'd be a great way to do it but i don't think you need to see old indiana jones die. I, just, I don't want to see it, <laughs> Dennis. Oh, so sad. Yeah, after what happened in Star Wars The Force Awakens, I'd say uh, I don't know. It's a possibility. Yeah. I can see it like at the beginning. Imagine if it's just Harrison Ford's only in the movie for like five minutes. In the beginning he's like, let me tell you a story, son. And then they just right. flash back and it's all young Indiana Jones. At and the it's very, Shia LaBeouf. Yeah. And yeah. at the very end he, he comes back to him. He's like on his deathbed. He's like, "Oh, that's a great story." And then he just croaks. And then from now on, it's all the the, the young Indiana Jones. <laughs> and George Lucas pops up. Ha ha! Got you guys. Yeah. Uh, I don't think they're gonna do that. But is it a possibility? Sure. Maybe not this one. Maybe in a. The, I mean, the thing is, he's you know he's gonna be what seventy nine or something like that by, by the time yeah the by the time they out. yeah Wendy, what do you think? Well, I I mean I don't want Indiana Jones to die. I feel like Han Solo. It, not that it was bound to happen, but it was more, I kind of saw it coming. But with Indiana Jones, it would really give me a heartache if yeah. they're just kind of like, well, I'm just too old to do this, so we're just going to we're just gonna erase the character. Don't do that. Introduce, do what you said, introduce a younger, and then we can move forward from that. This is a great point, though, here, because when you, when, when you kill off Han Solo, right, it is part of an ensemble cast. You can go off and you can you can absolutely start to further the story and it helps the plot point. When you kill Indiana Jones, now if you're not doing what we just suggested, going back in time here, and it's just an Indiana Jones standalone movie, it's like that's how we end the film. Is it he, he dies all by himself? Like and that's horrible. That's kind of what they wanted to <laughs> that's do. That's depressing. That's depressing. That's what they and this is the way to get around that is kind of what I'm proposing is to where even if he passes away, you show him when he's like 90 years old and he, and he passes away and it's okay, fine. So now we know that we're not going to see any more of him yeah. and it's this younger version. Okay, I can accept that if he passes away almost like almost like Yoda does. They're just like, oh, it's peaceful. The old We know the old Indy. And then yeah. Indy becomes a force ghost. Yeah. Well, the, <laughs> the, prob the problem with that, though, is it, the problem with my whole theory in general here is, is that it's it's – even though you know Indiana Jones is never going to die in the 30s or 40s, if you see him once he's 80 or 90 years old and he passes away, you never are going to fear for his death mm. because you know how he dies. He's peacefully eating a can of soup. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's, there's, there's so much to do, but we'll see what happens. All right, what's next? Albert T. Damon's The Third writes, Hey, Collider crew. In early 2015, I saw Jamie Foxx do a press run on a few TV and radio shows announcing that he was going to star as Mike Tyson in a biofilm directed by Martin Scorsese. It's been almost a year now, and I haven't heard any updates. I'm a huge Foxx and Tyson fan, and I know with Scorsese directing, this would almost... This would almost certainly get Fox another Oscar nomination. Have you heard any new info on this project? Thanks for your time. I have not heard anything else in this project, but I echo your sentiments, my friend. I am a huge Scorsese fan. Jamie Foxx, sometimes when I'm hearing I hear him in interviews and other things, I'm like, ah, but his performances are great, man. You can't you can't judge Electro doesn't count. No. But the other things that he's done, <laughs> like with Collateral and Ray and so many movies that he's been in, the guy is a great talent. Perfect casting for Mike Tyson. Perfect. Um, I think that I would, and Scorsese directing. When I heard, I, and I know exactly what you're talking about. They made a big thing about this when they announced it. It was it was all over the place. It was a story we covered on on Movie Talk, and uh, I haven't heard anything about it either. I don't know what's going on with it. I know Scorsese right now. He's kind of focused in on a couple. I know he's, he's just kind of put out vinyl, the TV show, and he's working on the, the new. Movie that he's probably in. I think post obviously, or they're getting ready to release the one with Andrew Garfield. Silence. Silence. Yeah. So and uh, but. Please come out with this Tyson movie. Scorsese doing it. It's his return to boxing since Raging Bull, right? That's yeah. the last one he did. So um, to see Scorsese back in a boxing movie and to see the whole... I'm curious, though, because Jamie Foxx is in his 40s. So where do they cover, if they're going to indeed do this, where do they cover 
the Tyson story? Like, are they going to do it? Are they try to maybe do the Michael Douglas <laughs> yeah. Ant Man stuff and make him younger, like in his twenties. They probably could do that. So, have you heard anything about this? No, not since that announcement. I mean, he had said that he had a meeting on the Paramount lot, and that's what they were doing. They wanted him to play Mike Tyson, right. and that Scorsese was spearheading it. I don't know if that meant he was directing it or producing it. Uh, and you know, the only thing I worry with Jamie Foxx, I think he's a he's a good talent as well, is that he's been known to do Mike Tyson impressions. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully he he veers away from the impression side and actually goes into the actual character himself. I think he will, man, because okay. did you see him in Ali? Like he wasn't Ali, obviously, yeah, yeah. but he but he was that he was he was the, the yeah. trainer. And he I think he has a talent for it. I'm just yeah. th there's a danger there, especially with Mike Tyson. Because yeah. the second he's that ludicrous, yeah. Yeah. Like, it's like you you want to do that. Yeah. But I, I think that he's gonna tune. That's the kind of actor he is. He's going to tune into Mike Tyson. Mm -hmm. He's gonna. I believe that he's almost gonna. It's very chameleon like. And I'm so excited to hear about a possible idea that, that we could have. Uh, Scorsese directing it. So. All right, that's it. That's our show um, for today. That is Mailbag. I would like to thank the crew here today. First, Dennis saying, where can I find you? You guys can find me on Twitter at Think Hero and Instagram, Dennis.TZNG. Don't forget to watch our Collider TV talk tomorrow. I think we're going to put it around 5.30 Pacific Standard Time. Uh, ask questions, hashtag Collider uh, TV talk. And Wendy Lee joining us once again. Where can they find you? Well, thanks everybody for having me. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram and Snapchat at Wendy Lee Zaney. And as Denshin, Denich, Denshin, <laughs> Denshin mentioned, uh, Dennis mentioned TV Talk. Make sure you also show some support to our new host, Sinead DeFries, who we all know and love, as well as uh, David Griffin and Josh McCuga. Go find them on Twitter, follow them, make sure that you know exactly uh, who is leading you into this new TV Talk, as well as Mark Ellis and Dennis Ang, who will be the first two guests on movie uh, TV Talk. And we have the ultimate schmodown. Next week, you got Campia versus Merle. Look at that. Look at a big match there, too. Campia and Merle, that is coming. We are less than a week away from the big matchup. Real quick, you guys, we're getting closer now. You've seen the smack talk between Campia and Merle. I know that you've kind of, you don't, you said, I don't know too much about Merle yeah. yet, but you've seen kind of who's, first of all, who's winning the war of the words? Uh, second of all, who is, who do you think is going to win the match? Uh, I think John's winning the the War of the Words, and then I think he will, I, I think he will eke out a victory against Merle. Uh, Wendy, what do you think? I think John is definitely winning on as far as the smack talking. Yeah. As far as the match, I've done a little bit of research on both. So Dan's a beast. Uh, yeah. So I think it's going to be very close, but I think it's still going to go to John at the end. I asked Dan Merle on. I posted this. this because Dan, Dan is look. We're going to talk wrestling terms here. Uh, John is be the is the heel right now. We know this for sure. <laughs> and, and Dan is the face. And I sent a text to Dan. We're going to say, "Hey, are you? Uh, do you need anything for for Friday?" And he said, "Yeah, a valet for my car because that's how fast the match is going to take." And I was <laughs> like, "I like the smack talk. It's going down. So make sure you check that out. It's a movie trivia contest. It starts Friday, March twenty fifth. Our league is beginning. I'd like to thank Mark Riley for letting us hold his belt while we promote the match. And I'd like to thank you guys. Make sure collidervideo at gmail.com. Tune in every week here, Saturday and Sunday. We answer your questions. And in order to do that, you got to submit those emails. Ask away. Thanks for joining us and see us tomorrow on Movie Talk. Yo. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.